few mosquitoes out this morning so I'm just gonna make a little bit of a smudge here these pine needles have a lot of resin in them which create a lot of smoke which seems to get rid of the bugs and then once I got a good coal base then I just start to smother the fire with uh, wet wood and that'll really clear the area of mosquitoes Beautiful smooth surface. I'm using the Grandberg ripping chain and it just leaves you with this nice clean finish. If I used a traditional crosscut chain, it'd be much wavier and, and uh, rough. So uh, thank you Grandberg for making good chains. Thank you for making this mill uh, that I used and this rail system, as well as the Alaska mill that I'm gonna use next to flatten the other side. But uh, yeah, thanks Grandberg. They're the sponsor of this video. And honestly, uh, this cabin project is very much possible because of their support. They've supported a few videos and keeping this thing moving. So thank you very much, Granberg, for uh, believing in me. So I noticed when I was putting in the walls and kind of forcing in these, these wall pieces that I was pushing my post out of plumb. So I've removed the walls and I'm putting in braces.
I just want to pass along a little tip and this was given to me by someone and I can't even remember who if it was Instagram or YouTube um, but he said uh, you might have noticed but a wooden mallet is going to strike the chisel better than a rubber mallet and as soon as he said that uh, I realized that made perfect sense but I wanted to give it a try so uh, to compare I've got the rubber mallet here and then I just screwed in a piece of hardwood on the end of this rubber mallet so that I can compare the two. And it's really clear, when you hit with the rubber mallet, the mallet doesn't have as much force and it kind of absorbs the strike and isn't, isn't as powerful. When you hit with the wood side, it just plows through it, sends a vibration through the whole uh, chisel and really makes a big difference. So save a lot of energy striking with a wooden mallet. So today I am milling the biggest, most important logs in the cabin. These two center posts. They are 17 feet tall and they are kind of the main structural support in the center of the cabin that holds the ridge pull up. So I selected my two straightest, biggest logs for this and I was a bit hesitant to cut into them because I didn't want to make any mistakes, but it's going really well. I thought I would explain my process here. So the first step is using the Granberg edging mill to give myself a flat surface all the way along the length of the log. Once I've got my first flat surface, I am putting on the Alaskan mill. This is the classic Granberg Alaskan mill, and I'm setting it to eight inches. I want these posts to be an eight inch diameter. And so I get the flat surface that I've milled with this mill up, and then I run this mill across the whole log. And that gives me a nice even eight inch beam across the full length of the log. Once I've got that done, I flip one of those flat surfaces back up, put my guy board on and do the third flat surface with the edging mill again.
Okay, so the way this works is we look at the graph here, or the guide. We see that we've got pine, so we move the mode to D. So now it's going to do a reading for basswood, larch, and pine. Stick it in, and it's given us a reading of 21.5. 21. Now that's freshly cut. What if I go right into this core here? That was like 22. 22.5, <laughs> yeah. So right in the center is going to be the wettest. Yeah. And on the outside where it's got the sun, 20, sorry, 14.7. I think you can see it. There we go, 13. 13. Hmm. So in a week we'll check it again. We'll see how much it's dried out in a week. Yeah. The boards that we milled last summer are, and the ones that have been in the shelter protected from rain are 9, 10. Just a quick tip here on severing the grain of a log. So I'm getting prepped to start staining, uh, which means I need to cut these to the exact length that I need them. So I'm gonna cut this off with a chainsaw, but before I do that, I'm severing that line so that when I cut with the chainsaw, I don't get a bunch of tear out. This way I cut on the outside of my sever line and I get a nice clean cut and can sand it down without any of this wood getting ripped up and torn and give myself a rough cut. So you can see here, this is a side that I severed, so I'm not getting this tear out, and where there isn't a sever line, you're getting this problem, right? That's why we use the X-Acto knife.
This is a pretty exciting day. This is the back center post and I'm hoping to get it stained and put up in position today. I sand prior to staining to give uh, the wood a bit of a, a texture that allows the stain to get some, something to grip onto and, and soak in. And I'm using uh, a Sanson SDF. I've mixed three colors together to create this exact color, which is the exact color of the tamarack needles when they fall. So in the fall, this cabin will be the exact color as the tamarack needles, which I think looks really beautiful. I'm also uh, watering down the Sanson SDF a bit because I want it to A, be a little bit more transparent. Uh, I want the cabin to have a bit of a natural weathering to it, but I also do want to protect it. And also because it's expensive and by uh, I probably about a quarter ration of water added to this, which just spreads it out that much further. And it'll cost me a little less. And if I don't feel like it's protective enough or not dark enough, I can always do a second coat. So every day when I leave the house, Caitlin says to me, be careful. And for the most part, I do do my best to be careful. But this one's borderline a bad idea. And I maybe should wait for a friend to come help me, but I'm so excited to see this piece go up. I'm uh, gonna take it real slow and uh, see if I can hoist this 17 foot post up by myself. So. I am basically bolting down these straps, securing it down with U2 fasteners, and then I'm putting in a bit of a safety here in case it does slip off these ones that are bolting it down to give it a little extra catch. Wish me luck. Okay, I do wish I had brought my hard hat, but I'm just going to do my best to be very careful. I'm going to stay out from underneath this hoist. And take it slow. I want to keep the, the weight underneath the center of the tripod there and not have that chain pulling out too much this way. Otherwise, I risk the tripod falling over.
because this log is bolted into that stump and dug into the dirt, it's going to be pretty hard for this post to sway forward or back. And because I'm bolted in here, it's going to be pretty hard for it to sway side to side. As well as this joinery that I've cut also gives it that side to side support. So I think it's pretty well, pretty well set. I can uh, take down the, the chain hoist. Wow, this feels so good. Sound off my markings. Ooh. Love that joint. It just holds the law, holds the posts in place, even without screwing them. Trust my work? I do. Want to be sure. I agree. All right, that was a look. It's level. Wow. It does look level. Potatoes. Oh. First candlelit dinner in the cabin. Yeah. First of many. First of many. I'm not wasting any time. <laughs> 